In today's world of big data, the norm is that companies collect as much data as they want. Today we have with us Julie Treas, co-founder and CTO of Telescope to, of course, give us a demo of Telescope. But before we go there, first of all, Julie, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Of course, we are looking forward to this demo, but talk a bit about Telescope. Uh, what do you folks do? What problem are you folks are trying to solve? Telescope is a data protection platform that is built for uh, automation, right? Uh, the problem we're trying to solve is the problem we faced when we were trying to go IPO at Airbnb, right? Uh, we had to comply with GDPR and all these new laws coming up about uh, privacy, the right to be forgotten, um, and general data security we, because we were going public. Um, so the first problem we faced was that we didn't know what data we were collecting, how we're storing them, where they all are, and how they're proliferating. So the first step uh, that we do is to auto-discover data, including new data, and data that is always changing and growing. Um, so it really stems from the work uh, at Airbnb relating to data protection and privacy. What kind of markets, industries you cater to? We cater to uh, all types of uh, businesses from uh, financial companies uh, because they have very like highly regulated data, uh, healthcare, companies, same, uh, and also B2Cs um, because they want to protect their customers' data. Of course, when we look at you know some of these sensitive data, financial industries, which are very well regulated, of course, health care provider, they are very well regulated. But when we start using all these apps, unless you go to the privacy settings, then you figure out, hey, you know what? Even this app has a lot of access to my healthcare data that is stored on my phone or financial data. What are your thoughts about, you know, all these, you know, companies accessing our sensitive data? And in reality, do they really have access to sensitive data or they have access to just general financial and, you know, health data? It depends on the company, right? There are companies who collect data uh, that include your personal information. And there are co companies that collect your data but anonymize or do not store your personal information. They only collect, for example, health data for analytics purposes, like how many people are actually using uh, like this running app, um, but not actually storing every single user um, identifier. So yeah, it depends on the company. So you're not worried about you know, any kind of data breach or, you know, it's like limited data they have access to? Oh, I am always worried about that because in today's world of big data, a lot, uh, the, the norm is that companies collect as much data as they want um, to help them better understand their customers and better market their product and better build their product, right? This is like, a lot of companies' sole purpose for analytics is to grow their business. Um, and a lot of times, uh, what I see in the industry is privacy takes a back seat um, because product and growth is more important to companies, right? Profit. Um, so I am very happy to see all these privacy regulations coming up not just in the different states in the United States, but globally to protect individuals and make sure that we own our own data, right? And that companies are being responsible when we ask for what data do you have about me or delete all the data about me. And that also wants to bring telescope in the scope that I just were already explaining that you, you know, cater to financial industry, you cater to healthcare industries, but uh, will your is scope expand beyond these industries and a lot of other companies who do tap into our either financial or healthcare data so that they can pull what they knew without compromising on our data or your scope is limited to only uh, certain industries which are HIPAA compliant or other, you know, uh, compliant. 
fancy. No, we are not limited to those industries only. Um, we have customers that span many industries, right? Because they want to protect their their customers' data and their reputation, which is the number one value is trust, right? Within a company. Um, so we have customers in like skincare companies, uh, uh, travel. Um, yeah. So um, I mentioned fintech and healthcare tech because of their highly regulated data. Uh, but we do have a lot of customers in the consumer space as well. Yeah. So uh, we like to cater to and um, advocate for and enable companies to uh, be pro-data privacy. Perfect. Thank you so much. Now let's see Telescope in action. Uh, you're going to show us a demo. Let's see it. First, I'm going to show you the Telescope data protection platform. After that, I'll show you the Telescope's um, scan and redact API. So first part of our product is uh, you can see here is the dashboard. This is the first thing that you see when you uh, log into your telescope um, dashboard. Um, so the first thing that we do is um, we discover all of your data um, in different cloud environments or third parties like AWS, GCP, Snowflake, um, Google Drive, um, and then um, we tell you uh, what types of sensitive data are within them. So, for example, if we go to this RDS cluster, uh, we see that there's an accounts database cluster, um, and within that, there's a database uh, called accounts and you can see here the categories of uh, information that's being created. But we, we can go into the column level, all the way to the column level to identify, hey, actually, the data elements contained in this are user identifiers and bank account numbers. And we uh, go a step beyond identifying what data elements we found and tell you, what that data element or who that data element is about. In this case, we were able to determine that this belongs to a customer. So that's a very important, it seems like a, a, a very minute feature, but actually it's like one of the most powerful features of data classification, right? Because a lot of data classification tools out there will tell you we found an address but what they don't tell you is who is that address about. So most of the time they'll flag addresses that actually are public landmarks or uh, branch bank ad. I mean, a bank branch address or uh, a restaurant's address. Those are not PII. Those are public information, right? Uh, the same thing with like names and like um, uh, phone numbers or like country names or city names. Uh, we are able to identify if those are PII or not. If we found a country name or a city name, for example, we're not going to flag that as a PII because it's just a city name. It doesn't belong to a person. That's what we do on the data classification side. This is uh, continuous and automated, uh, so you always have an up-to-date picture of all your data. Uh, and you can even filter through and for what you want to find out. So, for example, you got a data breach and you want to know uh, what data was compromised. So here you can easily tell that user identifies phone numbers, first name, last name, passwords, and bank account numbers were compromised. Uh, and you can take action and then... Um, let your uh, stakeholders know, hey, this has been compromised. Um, it also helps with investigation. And then another thing we do is we surface um, security issues related to the data source. So whether it's database or blob storage or Google Drive, right? Because uh, we scan all um, 
structured and unstructured data. So in issues, um, we're able to surface uh, based on criticality level, right? For example, right here, we found a database cluster that is open to the world, meaning it doesn't, its firewall rules allows traffic from anywhere in the world from anyone. Um, it still has uh, authentication, but the fact that it's open to the world makes it very susceptible to attacks. We mark that as critical because it contains payments and personal information. Um, the data category as part of the criticality or severity level is really, really important because if because we don't we what we want to do is also eliminate or decrease alert fatigue on security teams. So if this database cluster did not contain any sensitive information, it would not be flagged as critical. Users can also enable different compliance standards that they want to adhere to. For example, NIST uh, or ISO 27001 or GDPR, UK GDPR, PIPL, you name it, right? We keep our compliances up to date with what's um, happening in the world and all the laws that come up. Um, and speaking of compliance, um, all these privacy laws, um, they always have a clause or people know them as the right to be forgotten, just like GDPR, right? So this is something that we support. Since we have mapping of all the data, uh, we're able to support um, companies in their efforts to be compliant by uh, giving them a feature to delete data when a customer asks for their data to be deleted. This is Telescope's data protection platform. And all of the information you see here, whether it's in um, issues or the data catalog, um, this is all accessible via API. So what our customers do is they build on top of our platform. One example is for Snowflake, for example, um, one of our customers implement automated masking policies based on the data, the PII that we find within their data warehouse. Um, uh, there's a lot of many use cases like um, automating um, access controls. For example, if you have a payments data uh, database and someone outside of the payments team is trying to get access to that, you can automatically deny that. So endless possibilities in terms of building on top of Telescope because it is a true platform, right? A platform is something you can build upon. Um, so next, what I want to show you is Telescope's Scan and Redact API. Um, I shall share you this tab with Telescope Scan and Scrub API. Uh, you can uh, scan data in transit. Uh, so you can either classify. So here, for example, we were able to classify first name and credit card information and email uh, and phone number. Um, or you can scrub, right, uh, so that the first name when it gets transmitted, it gets redacted before it hits uh, where it's going. Uh, in this case, you see that the credit card is not tagged as a credit card number that was detected. That's because we validated it, and it's an invalid credit card number. It's no longer valid. So we, when we scan for such sensitive information, such as like passwords, API keys, credit card numbers, we do... Um, validate if they are still valid or not, again, to eliminate alert fatigue. Um, a lot of the use cases uh, around the API is you could use it in your logging aggregator to make sure that you're not leaking sensitive information into logs or to prevent fraud by... Um, redacting data between messaging systems within your um, app or within like uh, your 
company so that like customers and other customers can t exchange credit card information、um, and then、uh, have one of your customers' identity be stolen.、Uh, so this one also has endless、uh, capabilities. So, those are the two main parts of our product. Julie, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course,、uh, talk about Telescope, the scope of Telescope, and also show us this demo. Excellent, great demo there.、Uh, thanks for all those insights. And I would love to chat with you folks again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Swapna. 